Hello everyone. I would like to welcome you to our presentation video about Agile validation in GXP. Some of you might remember that several months ago, the Vega Informatic colleagues, Ms. Daniel and Mr. Fuchs, had a spontaneous meeting and discussed some basic problems and potential solutions to HLI's validation in GXP projects. Following this discussion within Vega Informatic, we decided internally to start a concrete implementation of a new LIMP system using this approach. Important was to ensure a more flexible product development methodology while sticking to the CSB rules and regulatory constraints of a GXP system. Very quickly, it became obvious that a simple one-to-one -one takeover of traditional established processes was not possible. A new approach using critical thinking about the purpose of computerized system validation had to be worked out. The following role play is a fictive online meeting showing Mrs. Daniel in the role of the internal validation expert and Mr. Fuchs as the technical consultant of the new limbs. Both are having a handover session to the new QA who will be taking over the project from the former QA who has left the company. In this session, they will present the main aspects of their agile validation approach and answer the QA's questions. Please feel free to post your questions into the chat window. We would be pleased to welcome you in the session directly following this video to answer your questions. But now, enough for introduction, just relax and enjoy the meeting. Good morning, everyone. Great that you all found the time to join us today. As mentioned in the invitation, Andreas, Matthias and myself have set up this meeting to show you our approach on how to combine a flexible product development using agile principles while still keeping the regulatory constraints. As we have not seen each other in person so far, I propose to make a quick introduction round and hope we can make, meet and talk to each other in person quite soon. So my name is Evelyn. I'm the validation expert in this LIMS project. I already did many validation projects and created a substantial amount of validation documents. This project is different from my previous one, as we managed to achieve a full integration of the validation activities into the development process in order to become agile. Hi, so my name is Matthias and I'm representing the LIMS vendor. I'm a Scrum Master and I have many years of experience in agile software development. Also for me, this project is very special because so far we always had a clear distinction between the system development phase and the system validation phase. Hi Evelyn. Hi Matthias. My name is Andreas. I am uh, in the company for uh, since only a few months and I was assigned to your project as the new QA. Uh, in the past I supported many projects as QA but so far no project was performed using agile methodologies. So I am pretty new to the concept and I am very interested to learn more how you defined the validation approach with Agile principles and how you implemented CSV requirements. So can you please show me what you've defined in this project? Yes, sure. Uh, I will start with uh, the validation goal. So we started our project aware that systems have to be validated if they have an impact on patient safety, product quality or data integrity. A system may also need validation if it's not GXP relevant, but business critical, for example. So we also know that computer system validation is the documented evidence that the system scope was specified and implemented according with the relevant, in accordance with the relevant law and regulation and with this, its intended use. And that will most likely remain so in the future. So to validate computerized system risk management uh, helps to put efforts where it makes sense. So the goal is to control and remediate risks. Additionally, to the widely established GAMP5 risk-based approach, CSA, Computer Software Assurance, is a strategic position that FTA plans to develop to change requirements how validation of a computerized system or computer software should be performed in future. CSA is right now a plan and not a release guideline. However, I'd like to mention two aspects of CSAs, CSA, critical thinking and ensuring quality. Critical thinking 
means to think about the real purpose of validation and to focus testing, rig testing rigor on areas that directly impact patient safety or product quality. The riskier the system, the more testing and documentation will be needed. Ensuring quality means to take credit for prior assurance activities and upstream downstream risk control, to focus on testing, not on scripting, and to use unscripted testing for low or medium, medium risk component. Informal or unscripted testing by business, for example, in review sessions, also increase quality. And additionally, we aim to manage our quality assurance processes to the highest possible level by applying record versus document thinking. Okay, Andreas. So, um, as Evelyn already mentioned, um, we needed to stay flexible during the project or better set the product development phase. So, um, what is agility? Um, let me summarize it um, in a nutshell, if you want, as follows. So, agile methods or frameworks always have the intention to allow a high degree of flexibility in a product development process. This is mandatory as we live in a world of increasing dynamics, uncertainty, fast changing markets and um, therefore constantly changing user and product requirements. And we simply have to be able to deal with that situation. So this being said, it's very common that not all requirements are finally collected when we starting a project. Also, or also very common um, that uh, initially collected requirements will change or become obsolete during a project development phase. So HR methods are based on empiric process theory. This means we start with what we know at the beginning, being very well aware that things will change over time. And this is not a problem of insufficient planning or missing specification, but a matter of fact of these fast changing environments that we live in. Therefore, we welcome change in requirements as a positive effect. And if there's a change in the requirements, it usually has a good reason and it allows us to optimize the final product for the end user. Regarding the project planning, um, this of course implies a certain complexity and difficulty as we need to deal with the inability to plan our project from start to end as we are used to do so in the classical waterfall methods. One of the elements to reduce this complexity and uncertainty is to break down the work package into small planable batches. We call them increments. Based on the HR key pillars of transparency, inspection, and adaptation, we try to deliver and review small but fully, increment, fully, fully integrated increments um, of the system quite often to be able to make adaptations if necessary. The development of these increments is, us is usually much better manageable than the planning of the whole system at once. In addition, the HR product development team should always be interdisciplinary and combine all necessary skills and roles to develop a product. And all of them must collaborate and communicate on a frequent basis, ideally daily. Uh, so basically, uh, Andreas, our agilized validation approach can be summarized as follows. So we defined a holistic end-to-end -end approach, including business, development and validation from beginning on. So when we speak about product development, we include implicitly the validation. It's very important. In, in other words, validation is part of the product. So for that, we set up cross-functional teams consisting of representatives from the different disciplines like product owner, business um, subject matter experts, business analyst, developer, vendor, tester, validation expert, quality of course, Scrum Master, and then we collaborate on one product backlog split into several views for the different teams. We allow continuous refinement of the requirements, as Matthias said, flexible product development, and we ensure quality with defined quality gates. To support this process, we are using a validated tool, which avoids data redundancy, data transfer between systems or between documents, and which allows transparency and full traceability. Um, Evelyn, um, that, so that means, um, do I also have the possibility to get involved in the product development as a Q, uh, and the QA pro process? Sure, sure, Anas. You 
do not just have the possibility to do so, but it's required that you are involved. Although the product owner takes the final decision about which feature uh, will be implemented, the entire team is responsible to reach the product goal. So in case there is a regulatory demand or if you see an issue, you have to discuss this with the uh, PO, with the pro product owner. Um, okay, let me give you some more details. Maybe it becomes more clear. The high-level validation concept consists of three main phases. There is an initialization phase, the iterative development phase, and the reporting phase. In the initialization phase, we already did the system risk assessment and supplier assessment, um, and we also created the validation plan. Additionally, the toolset was introduced and trained to the project team. Further guidelines and SOP also needed to be created, for example, the development guideline before starting the development activities. In the interactive phase, we include all specification, design, build and test activities. Artifacts like user requirements, functional specification, developed features or tests are created and approved during this phase in an incremental way, controlled by defined quality gates. And the full traceability is ensured by the toolset. After that, during the reporting phase, the validation activity will be closed. The final quality gate ensures that all requirements of the target release are validated and that the release is ready to be deployed on point. In our case, closing the validation activities will also consist of issuing the release notes and the validation reports. Um, activities required, required for the deployment on uh, the productive environment, like the IQ, will also be reported in the validation report. And we will also ensure that the procedure um, defined are trained and uh, in order to keep the system in a validated state afterwards. Okay, so to become concrete, um, here you see our high level concept um, that we came up with. Um, there are four basic ideas behind it. First, we do not think in project phases, but in releases as part of continuous product development iterations. And we sum up several of these increments to a fully validated productive release. All validation relevant artifacts and documents will be created on a release base. As we normally have one product or system, um, to develop, we also maintain only one product backlog. The view on this shared backlog is separated for different activities like business analysis, feature development and testing to ensure keeping the overview. To ensure transparency, each team member has always the option to inspect the progress and status of the other streams. This is important as we need to make sure that the BA and development workflow are in sync to avoid bottlenecks. We define three major activities, that is BA, development and testing. Each activity section is closed and controlled by a defined quality gate. There are well-defined checklists that define at which point in time a backlog item is ready for development or testing. The last step of BA is the approval of the backlog item. This approval step is performed by the QA or PO and transfers the story automatically into the development backlog. So each backlog item, for example, requirement, has to be processed in a defined workflow shared by the three activities. The decision which backlog item will enter the workflow is made by the product owner, thus providing the flexibility to work on more important items first. We do not define which methodology must be used within the three activity streams. Nevertheless, we made good experience when using Kanban for the business analysis because we found that fixed sprints do not have a benefit for BA work, which can usually take some time for clarification. In the development activity, we use Strum because it helps to deliver system increments frequently in a fixed cadence. This is important to keep a stable development rhythm and staying flexible regarding the features to be developed next. The testing activity within a release development cycle is slightly decoupled from the first two workflows. This is because it's very diverse at which point in time 
test cases can be developed or executed. Sometimes requirements and specifications are very precise prior to development. So the test cases could be written in parallel or even prior to the implementation. In other cases, the solution for requirements must be elaborated during the implementation activity. And so the test cases have to be written after feature development. Nevertheless, while preparing all the necessary test documentation in the development phase, deployment in our test environment for sprint reviews and the informal test execution, we perform a staging to validation for selected increments. Deploying each increment would be too much effort. In average, every second increment will be deployed on validation. On validation, we execute the test scripts and we document this execution. Any deviation or defect from a formal or informal test execution will be documented as a new defect item or linked to an existing one and then directly be pushed back into the product backlog for bug fixing. And by the way, the test scripts are automatically linked to the defect if the defect is created from the test management plugin that we use. This ensures a very good traceability and a seamless test documentation. In any case, backlog items like user stories, for example, will be finalized and approved at the final quality gate right before the release deployment. So summarizing, Andreas, we have implemented the known B model in a slightly different way, still ensuring that there are cross checks between user requirements and user acceptance tests or functional specification and functional testing. IQ documentation testing is performed at the end on each release as part of the staging process from dev to val and finally to prod environment. So here in more detail, you can see how we've set up our tool set as an implementation of this high level workflow that I just explained. Each backlog item or requirement will enter the product backlog in status new. In this initial status, requirements are still in very different raw formats as they may enter backlog from very diverse sources. Next step is that the product owner orders this list and decides together with the BA team which requirements are most important to work on. These items are transferred into the BA to do status. The BAs are self organized and they pull the stories from to do into in progress if they start working on the refinement of the stories. Once they're done, the story goes into in review. As soon as the BA has some capacity, he or she will review the story, and if everything is fine, according to the definition of ready, he will shift the story to done. The final improvement of the story needs to be done by a user with the system role QA. The system, will, the system audit trail will record that action. After the transition to approved, the state, to approved state, the story will automatically appear in the developer's backlog view. From here, again, the PO has the possibility to prioritize which story needs to be developed in the next sprint by shifting it to status development to do. As we're using Scrum for the development stream, this is equal to the sprint backlog. According to Scrum, our developers are self-organized. And once they understood and accepted a story, they will start with the development process until they're done according to our second quality gate, the definition of that. It's important to have an interdisciplinary team that is composed of vendor SMEs, that's for example like me, software developers, validation experts and testers. Please note that I'm only talking about roles. So in our case, one person can have multiple roles. So for example, I am um, vendor SME and Scrum Master. During the implementation, Testers will create the required test scripts, and we always try to have all the required scripts ready by the end of a sprint to be able to test our increment against these scripts before we demonstrate the achieved work to the stakeholders. If we cannot finish test cases for a story in a specific sprint, then the story cannot be accepted as done, although we might show the implemented functionality to the stakeholders, st stakeholders to get their feedback. The story will be pushed to the next sprint 
and required testing activities will be finished. This will give us a very good position for the third and final process, the formal testing and verification step. Some of the developed increments will be staged to the VAL environment during the release development. There's no clear rule when this will be done. It's a task of the PO in collaboration with the team to decide which increment is worth to be pushed to validation and execute the test cases. The so-called pre-release is deployed on the controlled validation environment and here the final or still outstanding formal test runs will be performed. Again, the QA has to approve the final transition into status validated. Only if all stories are in status validated, we are entering the reporting phase where the release can be finalized. Validation rep, uh, reports um, will be written and the release will be pushed to production environments following a defined process. Um, sorry, question. I can follow the, the process, but I do not see any risk management part in the, the approach. Do you use a risk-based approach? And if so, where can I see it? Uh, let me let me give you an answer, Andreas. Um, sure, we use risk-based approach. We assess the risk for each requirement, also called specification item, directly in our tool. So, first of all, we rate the business and the GXP criticality, and we document the risk category in the user story or in the specification item. So, for example, per is it a patient risk, a data quality risk, data integrity, IT security, um, privacy? Then we define the requirement implementation type for each requirement, like is it a standard implementation, is it configuration, or is it customization? And based on this, we define the appropriate uh, risk mitigation strategy according to the definition made in the validation plan. So uh, risk mitigation might be by testing, or by any other verification activities like providing training, creating standard operating procedure, or defining service level agreements. Um, in case of testing, we differentiate between unscripted testing and scripted testing, and also between different level of testing like um, functional or user acceptance test or IQ. So the more critical a risk and the more complex its implementation, the more testing will be defined. Overall, it means that the test rigor results directly from the risk assessment made for each specification item. All this information has to be uh, documented before the specification item gets approved by USQA or by the product owner, depending on the requirement type. So it means that it's part of the definition of ready to make sure that the risk assessment is appropriate and, prop and properly documented. So, um... Does this mean that DOR, DOD, and DOC, that they are quality gates where I can control the project as a QA? Yes, exactly. So let me briefly explain you the quality gate of the iterative phase. So the definition of ready is the first gate, which closes the specification and design activities. Um, the transition to approve is required for each user story. Independently, if it's a user requirement, a functional specification, or a configuration specification. So the purpose of this gate is to ensure that the spe specification item is written um, following quality characteristics for requirements, and that the acceptance criteria are defined, risk assessment is performed, and links to related documentation of other specification, or the links to corresponding tests and or verification scripts are available, are correct and valid. Then the definition of done, the second uh, gate, close the implementation activities for each specification item again. So it's the transition to implementation accepted. And the purpose is to ensure that the feature are implemented and technically fully integrated, that the acceptance criteria are fulfilled, the test cases, IQ, SAT, UAT are created or updated and successfully dry run. And very important that the feature are demonstrated and accepted by the business. And the last gate uh, for a specification item is the definition of compliance, confirming that the ver verification activities as defined in the risk assessment um, are, are performed. Um, the specification item get then to verified, and the purpose is um, to, to verify that the tests are executed and passed, or in case of defects, that the defects are all assessed and accepted. 
um, that the traceability matrix is showing how each specification item was verified, tested, um, and also that SOPs or, or other documents are available. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's nice. But I haven't seen anything about traceability yet. That's a good question, Andreas. So um, I thought you'd never ask about that. But look, here's an example of our trace matrix, um, which is generated from the system. I've made a screenshot of the report that shows the relations between user stories, functional and configuration specifications, and their unique ID. Directly linked to user stories are our PQ test scripts. Linked to the functional and config specs are our, our OQ scripts. We're not yet ready with all the test scripts, and that's why there are still uncovered stories. It might also be uh, the case that no test case is required. So another mitigation has been identified for user story according to our risk assessment. The benefit of this report is that it provides a full trace between URS, FS, CS, and test cases, and that it is always up to date because it's directly generated out of the actual data from the system. I can show you um, more details when I show you the live system in the follow-up session after this initial handover introduction meeting. Okay, thanks for the explanation, Matthias. That looks good. Um, but where is the risk analysis in this view? Again, a very good question. Um, the thing is, for the first release, the so-called MVP, we decided that we do not add this information in the report, as it's technically not easy to, uh, to be achieved um, with the plugin that we currently use. Um, but we have already added it to the backlog for the next release. At the moment, um, you have to check it manually if the risk mitigation is done properly. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Can you tell me where we are in the project right now? Sure. Um, I can show you a, a detailed report, um, but I would uh, propose to do it in the next session where we where we can have a look at our our, our Jira system. Sure. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Great. So hi everyone. We are now at the end of the recorded video. I would like to invite all of you into the next session directly following now. We have another 30 minutes to discuss any of your questions and concerns. I really hope to see all of you in a couple of minutes. Um, by the way, technically you have to leave this session now and join the next session. Looking forward to see all of you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.